Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is for educational purpose only. This is the case of the ideal quadruples. I'd love to stop by thanking all my subscribers, my viewers, for all the kind, mindful, respectful comments you leave for me and especially for the victims and their grieving families. In this channel, we have learned to and we practice on respecting the victims. It's no point if you disrespect the victims and their families that we try to get justice. The victims are always number one. The families are number one too. You have to show some dignity and respect for these vulnerable victims and their families. To start with, this is mostly going to be speculations and a bit facts in it. Like I said, it's for entertainment purpose only, education. Education purpose is actually better than entertainment purpose because there's nothing entertaining about four young lives gone too soon. May the rest in peace. Today I'd like to continue talking about John Roger Showalter Jr. The strange thing is I've always called him John Jack Showalter from the beginning and I remember many people used to correct me and say no his name is Jack not John. So it just shows that everything in the beginning was mostly white. That's what he was addressed as John Jack Showalter. Junior. Most of us and most of my subscribers have heard the fact that he got arrested yesterday at 11.25. I, lived, I love to give credit to his due. This is Bubbly Waters who found out this information and put it up first there. Bubbly, uh, Bubbly Waters does a lovely work in this case. And coming back to John Jack Schwalter, I've spoken about him in my previous clip, so there's not much to add on there, but just to remind you all that he was the person who passed the threat. They, they're going to get you for that, Maddie. And within two hours, Maddie, Kaylee, Zan, and E were all deleted, unalived, which is so sad. So when is a threat supposed to be taken serious and when can we define the difference between a threat and a joke? If this was a joke, then we would have taken it as a joke if nothing happened that horrific night. John Jack Walter seems to be always getting caught up in bad behavior. Let's not forget that this guy is a professional hunter and a professional wrestler. He's been hunting since he was 16 years old. We've seen pictures of him with a K-bar knife. Actually, there's two K-bar knives with him and the guy standing beside him. We know that he's a student with a lot of trouble and concerns and issues because he's thrown out of his frat fraternity that's Delta Tau, Delta, his parents rented him a flat in Queens Road, not far from where the four victims were unalived. So it wouldn't have been much of a distance for him to have walked or ran from the victim's house to his house, allegedly. He was the next door neighbor. Queen's apartment we saw was just on the other side. John Jack Schwalter was arrested yesterday for bad behavior, disturbing the peace and disturbing the neighborhood. Neighborhoods can be big or small, but for disturbing the neighborhoods, I wonder, neighborhood, I wonder if he was intoxicated, if he was high on rugs or something was going on with his behavior. 
Now let's not forget that if you go back to some of my clips in the beginning especially, you will see that there was a young woman who when she found out that John Jack Schwalter was the last person to be seen with the girls at the grub truck, she immediately came on Facebook, on social media, and she said that she had something to say. She wanted to share with us the fact that she worked with John Jack Schwalter at a bakery in Boise, Idaho, and she said that he was really very aggressive working with. She said that, I don't know if it's a bakery, sorry, it could be a restaurant, a cafeteria, a bakery, something like that. She said he was really rude and aggressive towards female workers. She said that he came right to her face because they had some disagreement about something at work. And she said he was right in my face, I had to tell him to move. She said it didn't help, he kept on standing in the way and staring at her and give her this, giving her these aggressive looks, allegedly. She said that she had to slap him to get him out of the way. She said, if y'all don't believe me, y'all can go check that on the Boise police report that she made. So we are dealing with someone and she even said that if, allegedly, he was one of the last people to be seen and the way he was behaving at the grub truck and with her experience of working with him and how he was behaving there, she said she wouldn't be surprised if he's involved. Basically, in short words, she meant that Schwalter was bad news. My question always was, as a mental health therapist, how was Schwalter at home with his parents? Could he have been the child with the silver spoon that he was always being fed by his parents just to keep him happy? Because as soon as he was kicked out from the frats, Parents rented him a house in Queens Road. In Queens Road, I wonder what was his relationship with his parents, and I really wonder if one of the girls, maybe Maddie, Katie, or even Zana, must have turned him off and said that they weren't interested, that they had a boyfriend or something, and if he took that literally. took that literally very aggressively for him to have said on the way from when the girls walked from the corner club to the crop tr grub truck we clearly heard Walter saying you know they're going to get you for that Maddie and within two hours they all were unalived now when are threats supposed to be taken seriously is the question was that a threat or was that something you just said? Because right after that, Maddie, Kaylee asks Maddie, Maddie, what did you tell Adam? Which is very fishy. And Maddie said, I told Adam like everything. Adam Lauder would have known definitely what was said and who he said it to. Could it be something that wasn't supposed to be said or maybe Kaylee ran up into something with these people and she didn't even realize that she was talking to the enemies or the enemy. When we saw Jack Walter walking with the girls, coming to the club truck, pay attention, he did not order any food. And what is so strange is that Walter kept on looking at Kaylee Kale and Maddie. He kept on following each and every mood they made he was standing right behind them. At times it looked like Kaylee was taking pictures of him or taking a picture, pretending to be taking a picture of herself, a selfie, but at the same time she was taking the picture about the background and the people are in the background. As soon as she does that, you see Shawalta with his cap and his hoodie. He looks down every time Kaylee tries to take a picture. So I found that to be a red flag too. The fact that he did not buy food was even strange for me. Does it make sense? Was he sent by some organization or by the people who unlived 
the four victims to maybe tag on and be surveillance so that the girls wouldn't contact maybe the police if there are some secrets or whoever. What could have got four people so brutally unalived is a question. Usually a knife is a crime of passion or it can be out of aggressiveness and out of anger too. I can never forget the words the mayor said in the beginning, the mayor of Ido. He said that he, he heard it was a crime of passion. And at the same time, we heard William Thompson, the prosecutor, saying it wasn't the students that were tar the target, it was the house that was the target. Now, what I find interesting is when we first heard that four people were unalived in 1122 Kings Road, we heard that it could be a possibility could be a robbery gone wrong. I wonder if anything was stored in the house, like money, rugs, something big, something that costs a lot, a lot, and maybe somebody came to rob the house and they found some of the victims awake. So they had to unalive them. Could that be a possibility? I'm just asking because the fact that they said a robbery gone wrong in, in the beginning of the case is strange. They started changing everything about the case, including the most important in the timeline. Once you change a timeline or if the t timeline is not correct, nothing's going to make sense. Nothing's going to... It's like a puzzle piece. Something is missing. What is missing is the timeline. Nobody saw Maddie and Kaylee. i sorry. Nobody saw E and Zana, Eton and Zana, between 9 p.m. to 1.45. I wonder why. Is that the time they fought with the Sigma Chi fraternity boys? Could there have been some kind of retaliation towards Zana and E? Was there really a retaliation to Kaylee and Maddie, maybe? finding out some information about organizations or rugs that they ran into and they were going to tell on them. Could that be that the people went to unalive Maddie and Kaylee and Zana and E was already awake, so that to delete them too. That is a possibility, but I don't believe so. I believe out of the four targets, there had to be one up on the third floor and one on the second floor. I believe personally that Kaylee and Maddie were unalived later. It was the couple that was unalived before. Because you hear it on the grub truck, them yelling, Zana, Zana, and Ethan's name. No, Zana, no, Zana, they were yelling. I wonder what were they watching like. I wonder if this house was full of cameras, hidden cameras. Maybe even in the good wives, without them even knowing the good wife pictures. I wouldn't be surprised if the girls' room rooms were bugged and maybe cameras were there so that they know when the girls will sleep, when they get up, what their routine is like, what they're talking about. And I wonder if there was a snitch in the house. Isn't it strange that four young students, victims lost their life, but they're still two surviving roommates and the dog that weren't even touched. This doesn't make sense unless somebody really pressured that dog, Murphy, and they don't want Mur Murphy to be unalived. I find it strange that Jack D was the last person the girls, both the girls tried calling and I don't think it was a drunk talk or drunk call. I really believe that the girls were crying out for help or maybe Jack D himself got someone to call him so that he would have an alibi or called himself. I've always said that from the beginning and I'm not shying away. Something doesn't add up. I don't care if Steve Gongalvis and Chrissy Congalvis and Olivia are defending Jack D. I remember they, in the beginning they did not 
even trust Jackie. I believe that's why they did not allow him to talk in the memorial for Kaylee. Nothing of this case makes sense, but all I believe is that the Sigma fraternity and other fraternities are involved. I believe the sororities are involved too, somehow or other. I won't be surprised if BK knew about what was going on, but he wasn't directly involved. I wonder where Saeed got these pictures that I exposed a long time ago. If you pay attention to Saeed's pictures at the grub truck, they look to, they look like those are crime scene pictures. All these strange behaviors going on that night, the four figures running, the three guys in Banfield, all of them are question marks. But coming back to John, Jack, Showalter, people are catching on to his name, Rogers, as being the middle name, and they believe it's linked to Papa Rogers. Honestly, I don't believe so, because I believe that Papa Rogers, whoever was acting Papa Rogers, could have been Brian or it could have been someone else, but this person was quite a in intelligent person, honestly. The words, the English grammar, everything they were using, I don't believe it to be Jack Shorter, but I could be wrong, because I don't know how clever he is with his college work. Could it be possible that Jack Schwalter had a crush on Kaylee or Maddie? I really believe it was Kaylee, the way he was eyeing her and looking at her at the grub truck. And I wonder if crime of passion was that his jealousy went to the roof and he lost his marbles. Maybe he just came to unalive Maddie or Kaylee and then he ran into Zan and E, who were weak. That's possible. But I still believe Zan and E were deleted by the Sigma Chi fraternity post. I believe the Davids are involved. I believe, allegedly, and I believe everyone at the Sigma Chi fraternity knew what happened that horrific night. Now, coming back to Mr. Showalter. He could be Papa Rogers, but I really don't believe. That is my pers personal opinion. But what I believe is that by him being arrested two years later for misconduct, for what's it called, disturbing the peace and disturbing the neighborhood, just shows that he has a pattern of disgraceful behavior, concerning behavior, maybe antisocial personality disorder behaviors, aka psychopath behaviors, psycho psychopathic behaviors. He could definitely have that. And then there's this final part I want to make. I know the creator, actually, I do watch at times, who said that the person who lived in BK's house, who pre previously owned it, had a Showalter name, Kendrick Showalter, and she believes that it is Jack Showalter's family. No, I don't believe that. I've checked into Jack Showalter and Jack dear many other people's families thoroughly, and there's no Kendrick. The Showalters have always lived in Boise, Idaho. They have a lot of influence in Boise, Idaho, so I don't see them being in Pennsylvania at all. But I could be wrong. This is getting interesting, seeing that Showalter has the psycho psychopathic tendencies whether it's sexual harassment, I shouldn't have said the word uh, trigger warning, and pardon me, whether it's S harassments, whether it's, it's getting kicked out of fraternities and now disturbing the peace and disturbing the neighborhood. I wonder if he was throwing things at the neighbor's house or if he was just having a rampage while he was intoxicated, yelling and stirring up nonsense in his neighborhood but that all is behaviors that are kind of very concerning. I was kind of surprised to hear that he got arrested, but 
I shouldn't have been surprised, honestly, because once one person, that's what I believe as a licensed mental health counselor, when somebody has such behaviors, especially like antisocial personality disorder, it starts from the age of eight, 10, right up to the teens. And this young man has shown a lot of concerns with all these troubling things the people in the College of University of Idaho have been talking about. The fact that he's a hunter, wrestler, the fact that he's harassed, harassed women and females that he's been working with in Boise, Idaho. By us seeing him threatening Maddie and saying, you know they're going to get you for that, Maddie, whatever it is for. All these things just gives me a better character of who this man is, and I've always wondered why he wasn't, why basically he was allowed to draw off that night. The police obviously must have found out the next day, but why didn't they? arrest him and bring him back to Ido Moscow so they could they could do a proper police integration because according to A. Mayers, the lawyer, he said that the Jacks were given an interview or integration over the phone and many other people and that is really scary and concerning because the police should definitely and they definitely needed to see if he had any injuries and scars in his hand. Well, you guys, we don't know what is true and what is false. I'll keep you all updated if I hear anything else. Please have a lovely evening. I know that you are, the Americans definitely are having the election night, I believe, tomorrow. I wish you all luck, luck to vote. Just vote. doesn't matter who wins or loses. Make your vote heard. Although I'm not an American citizen, I can just say that Donald Trump is gone from bad to worse. And Kamala Harris is just that the Biden regime won the best because too much international problems. Like look at what's happening in Israel and Palestine. And now they've gone into Lebanon that is a recognized country. I hope, for God's sake, for an our human sake, a human being's sake, that we get a better president in America this time around. Guys, have a lovely evening. I wish you all a bled, uh, blessed, sorry guys, blessed week ahead. Let's see. If there's any news that comes out about Jack Sh John Schwarter, and I hope that we get the correct justice for these four precious victims, and that the correct justice is done in case Beak is innocent. Just say if he's innocent, it isn't fair for him and his family too. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a lovely evening, guys. Bye.